Hi, good afternoon. We're here at the Senate Heart Office Building. I'm Maria Roach for We Act Radio, and we're live. And I have with me Henny Kelly from the Alliance for Retired Americans, who has flown in from San Francisco for this event. Henny, tell us, why are we here today? Well, I am here, and all of the people from the ARA are here, because we believe in Social Security. We believe that it shouldn't be cut. We see it as a contract with the American people, just as Medicare is a contract with the American people. Social Security hasn't hasn't made our debt any any bigger because it's my money that went in and my employer's money. What is happening now, and we are really afraid, is that the president is using uh, Social Security as part of a grand bargain. And what he thinks that we can do is instead of giving us our cost of living increase, that they will give us what's called a chain CPI. Well, you know what that's going to do? It's going to lower our cost of living increase and it's going to make it harder for seniors to buy food. It's going to make it harder for seniors to buy medicine. It's going to make it harder for seniors to live in dignity and that is what we are fighting. So we are here because we believe in Social Security and we believe in it for you and your children, my daughter, my son and my three grandchildren. I am going to keep fighting for this because if I don't fight for it, then we might lose it for the next generation. Well, that's one of the things that I find is a little bit frustrating, Henny, is that we keep hearing about spending cuts, but Social Security is one of, if not the only area in the federal government that is funded. And so why is the, the conversation switching to spending when this is not a spending issue when it comes to Social Security? Social Security is fully funded. It has $2.6 trillion. It is funded for the next 20 years. If we want to fund it any further, all we have to do is what is called raising the cap, scrapping the cap, because once you get to $113,000, you're not taxed with uh, the uh, the insurance for Social Security. I never got to 113000 so I wouldn't know about that. But if we scrap the cap, we could keep it going for 75 years. That would protect you, your children, and my, me and my children and grandchildren. And that's what we're trying to say. It has nothing to do with the debt. It absolutely is it has enough money for all the people who are working now. It has enough workers putting into money to keep it afloat. It's, it's the best thing that we have. And Medicare is another wonderful thing. So we really believe that we should protect it for future generations. What would you say is most disappointing to you, Henny, when you're uh Looking at this issue of chain CPI, uh, what is most surprising to you about this issue and the fact that it's in the president's budget? That it's in the president's grand bargain. It is so surprising that it's coming from a Democrat. Democrats are the ones who gave us Social Security and Medicare. It shouldn't be a Democrat that wants to cut anything from Social Security and Medicare. It is very upsetting that this is happening. Uh, I believe that he is doing it because he really wants to, to tax the rich, but you should never bargain with Social Security and Medicare. Do not bargain with the contract, the social contract you have with the American people. Great. Thank you so much, Henny. Um, next to me, we have Daniel Marins, who is with Social Security Works, uh, and Daniel is here in Washington, D.C. Daniel, give us a little bit of background on how do we get to this place with change CPI? Well, Maria, unfortunately, the president is under a tremendous amount of pressure to show that he is interested in being bipartisan and reaching across the aisle and finding what people are calling a grand bargain with Republicans that would, in exchange for cutting Social Security and Medicare, get some revenue into the Treasury. But we're unfortunately calling that the great, the great betrayal because that kind of a bargain um, with, the, with the Republicans who are at this point ex so extreme would cut the earned benefits of Americans that depend on them to survive. We've been talking quite a lot about the impact of some of these cuts and some of these grand bargains. As you were saying, Daniel, can you express to our, our viewers what is the impact of a changed CPI? 
Well, there's no question, Maria, that the chain CPI is, is, is code for cutting people's income, CPI. It will literally drive hundreds of thousands of people into poverty. It will make many middle class seniors and many workers today who are counting on Social Security in retirement or the event of disability that much more precarious, economically insecure, that much harder for them to pay rent. And it's a cut that deepens more and more as people age. And we know that as people get older and older, they run out more of their savings and, and Social Security becomes more important to them, not less. And so after, at age 75, you're looking at a six, uh, $600 cut. But at age 85, you're looking at an over $1,000 cut. At age 95, it's close to $1,400. And that's just for the average worker. So those cuts bite. And, and, and if you look at cumulative cuts over time, you're looking at something like $28,000 by the time a person reaches 95 that they wouldn't be getting that they would uh, under the chain CPI. Well, as you can see, we have uh, quite a crowd gathering here uh, that this issue affects so many Americans uh, and that it's not uh, something that can uh, wait, that people are uh, flying across the country, they are uh, driving in, they are traveling uh, quite a distance to be here today uh, to meet with uh, their legislators to talk about this issue. Uh, Daniel, what has been the response uh, to uh, the, your coalition partners, uh, to this event that you're calling today, and what do you hope to achieve? Well, Maria, there's one thing that is no question, and that is that members of Congress on both sides of the aisle now, we're finding, are extremely resistant to cut Social Security, particularly for today's beneficiaries. Again, many Republicans who have extremely conservative ideas about what Social Security sh should be still have made promises to their constituents and their seniors, and so we're seeing a tremendous uh, upswell of support for Social Security and Medicare in the United States House of Representatives, the United States Senate, uh, among both Democrats and Republicans. We now have over 100 Democrats in the House of Representatives who have said, no, we are against chain CPI. Over 40 who have said that they'll vote against it if it becomes part of any bill. And of course, here we have today many extremely prominent senators, including Senator Bernie Sanders, Senator Sheldon Whitehouse, Senator Jack Reed from Rhode Island, and, and uh, many others who are saying to the president, don't do this. This is not what the Democratic Party is about. This is not what's going to help us take back the House of Representatives in 2014. Okay. Great. Well, thank you so much, Daniel. Well, thank we'll look around the room, and uh, we see everyone's taking their seats right now. Thank you so much for joining us here at WE Act Radio. Uh, and we are about to start our event momentarily. Do you mind doing a, a quick pan and then... Yeah. Hi, good afternoon. Hi. I'm Maria Roach. This is WeActRadio.com. Oh, okay. And who do I have here I'm today? I'm Frank Stell. I'm the president of the Maryland DC Alliance for Retired Americans. Great. And I'll ask you to turn this way, please. Uh, and so tell me why you are here today and what are you hoping to achieve? Well, we're hoping to re basically readjust Congress's position on Social Security and Medicare. I mean, essentially, uh, we're very concerned about changes, especially the chain CPI, which has you know, been talked about a lot. But we want to re kind of remind people that Social Security is, is a, the most successful program in, uh, of America's domestic programs, as is Medicare. And I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to neglect that. And we don't want to be the first generation or to have, to have this Congress be the first Congress in a long time to basically renege on its promise to Americans, America's seniors and, you know, and quite frankly, their families, because a lot of this will hurt people who are, are younger than we are. So we're here to protect, you know, the system that we built as Americans. We want to maintain, and, you know, this is the found, Social Security is now the foundation of everybody's retirement with traditional pension plans going away. And Medicare is, you know, has literally is a life-saving program for folks. And we don't want to, you know, we don't want to see people stop going to the doctor because they have to pay more out of their own pocket. We want to continue, the, you know, the successes. And we want, basically, we want progress. 
Frank, how do we get to this point that we're here right now fighting for uh, for a benefit, uh, not an entitlement? As so often you hear, it's called an entitlement, but this is an earned benefit. How are, how do we get here? Well, this has been a 30-plus year effort on the part of the radical right uh, to undermine these programs. And I think in their own, quite not frankly, in the interest of their major supporters and funders. I mean, clearly the beneficiary of changing Social Security would be Wall Street. Uh, and in terms of Medicare, it's the industry, you know, it's big drug companies, it's the big hospitals that... And it, it is, you know, the, the people who don't want to pay taxes. I mean, clearly, you know, when you define the middle class as the Republican Party does, well, they, they define it as anybody. But now, even if you take the $400,000 limit, you know, for uh, changing the tax structure, that still defines a middle class person as somebody making $399,000 a year. And that's a joke in a country where the average household income is probably between fifty and 60000 so these are these folks don't want to pay their fair share, but honestly, there are powerful interests that don't want to do that, and they're making the rest of us pay. I mean, how else could you justify, you know, hurting, changing a, co a cola for people who are whose average social security benefit is a little under fifteen thousand a year, so that people, with you know, who are making nearly four hundred thousand a year don't have to pay more, or even you know, even worse. The hedge fund folks who are paying 15% of their income, uh, you know, can can maintain that. I mean, it's it's you know, tragic is a nice word. Obscene might be another word. Yes. Well, we'll uh, we'll see what happens. I think we're we're just about ready to start. Thank you so much, Frank. A pleasure to meet you. Thank you, and it looks like we're just about to start. Uh, you're watching WeActRadio.com. Thank you for tuning in.
How are you? Hi, Jane, it's this lady from Rhode Oh, my, thank you, my boot. Where? From Rhode Island. That's what I thought. You never know it from the boots, right? No. David Cicilline from Rhode Island. So for everyone who's joining us on the live stream, uh, we have a packed house. We're really excited for the hundreds of people who are in the room and the thousands of people who are joining us online around the country. Um, so uh, thank you for joining us. We're going to get started uh, really quickly here. Um, we're, we're really packed with people, so we're just ha having everyone find their seats. Uh, and then we will get started uh, really quickly. So uh, post the video on your YouTube, on your Facebook, uh, send it around, get your friends to tune in. It's gonna be a great uh, program. We've got multiple senators. We've got multiple senators uh, and representatives. We've got representatives from around the country. They're gonna fan out across the Capitol and make sure that our voices are heard. Uh, so stick with us. I'm gonna turn it over to Daniel Marins right now. He's gonna keep you entertained. I'm gonna keep, he's gonna keep you entertained until the program starts. Thanks so much for tuning in. Hello everyone, my name is, uh, let's see if I can, okay. Hello everyone, my name is Daniel Marins. I'm the Policy Director of Social Security Works and I'm very happy to be here to stand with dozens, hundreds of activists here packing the United States Congress to tell President Obama, to tell their members of Congress, Protect Social Security, don't cut it. Strengthen Social Security, don't cut it. No chain CPI. Chain CPI is another way of saying cutting people's income. We don't want to cut the people, the income of people uh, that depend on Social Security to survive. And of course, it's very important to note about the chain CPI cut that we're fighting today. That it, it's a cut that deepens more and more as the years pass. At age 75, for a person retiring with average uh, with average earnings, it cuts benefits by $650 a year by age 85 more than a thousand dollars a year in cut and, and thank you Daniels okay. we're gonna turn it over to Senator Sanders we're gonna turn it over to Senator Sanders right now uh, who's gonna kick things off yeah she should be in the Good afternoon. Thank you all very much for coming and let's get to work in saving Social Security. This is going to be a great meeting and I want to thank uh, the Alliance for Retired Americans. doing the great work, grassroots work, that they are doing all over this country. I want to thank the great senators and members of the House for being here. I'm going to introduce them in a minute. I want to thank Social Security Works, our DC, MoveOn.org, <laughs> campaign, the Campaign for America's Future, the Center for Community Change, the National Committee to Preserve Social Security and Medicare, AARP, the AFL-CIO, <laughs> Latinos for a Secure Retirement, <laughs> the Paralyzed Veterans of America, <laughs> AMVETS, AMVETS, and all the other groups. Yeah. We are bringing together, we're bringing together a coalition of veterans groups and senior groups and women's groups and trade union groups and civil rights groups that are not only going to save Social Security and Medicare, we are going to change America and do what the American people want. Today's meeting is pretty simple. We are sending a very loud message to the leadership in the House, to the leadership and members of the Senate, and to the President of the United States. And that message is pretty clear. 
At a time when the middle class is disappearing and when working families from Vermont to California are struggling to keep their heads above water, do not cut Social Security, Medicare, yeah. Medicaid, and other programs. you want to do deficit reduction, and all of you know, we have made significant progress in cutting the deficit in recent years. But if you want to go forward in deficit reduction, ask the largest corporations in this country who are making record-breaking profits to start paying their fair share. <laughs> We have more wealth and income inequality today than at any time since the 1920s. If you want to do deficit reduction, ask the top 1% who are earning all of the new income to start paying their fair share. Right. Before you think, before you dream, before you have any vision at all, of cutting any program that working families depend upon. Let's end the loopholes that allow corporate America and the rich to stash their money in the Cayman Islands and other tax havens. Now, all of you know that Social Security has not contributed a nickel to the deficit because it's funded by the payroll tax. And despite what you see on TV tonight, Social Security is not going bankrupt. In fact, it has a $2.7 trillion surplus, can pay out every benefit owed to every eligible American for the next 20 years. Yes. Now, if we want to save Social Security, I know a way to do it. And I think all of us up here are in support of that way. You save Social Security not by cutting benefits to seniors who are struggling to stay alive on $15,000 a year, not by cutting benefits for disabled veterans. You save Social Security by lifting the cap. percent contribute the same percentage to the Social Security Trust Fund as do working people. Now let's be very clear. There are some folks out there who say, well, you know, this so-called chain CPI, it's just a little tweak. So let me tell you about what this quote-unquote little tweak is about. If you're 65 years of age today, by the time you are 75 years of age, you will be losing $658 a year. Now that may be a tweak for some of the millionaires around here, but it ain't a tweak if you're living on $13,000 or $14,000. That is the difference between whether you live in dignity or not, whether you buy the medicine you need or the food you need. And if you are a disabled veteran, these cuts will mean tens of thousands of dollars during the lifetime of that veteran. And in this country, we are not going to balance the budget on the backs of men and women who lost their legs and their arms defending their lives. Now, you know why, you know why we're going to win this struggle? We're going to win this struggle because every single poll that I have seen tells me that the overwhelming majority of the American people are on our side. It is true that the big money interest in Wall Street want to raise the retirement age of Social Security to 70, and they want to cut all of the programs we depend upon, but the American people are clear. And what our job here in Congress in working with you, you have got to rally the grassroots you have got to put pressure on members of Congress. You have got to tell every single member of the House and Senate from your state that if they choose to cut Social Security, Medicare, or Medicaid, 
they do it at the peril of their re-election. And make that make the point. We got some great members up here, and let me start bringing them up right now. Jack Reed of Rhode Island, Senator Jack Reed has been in the forefront for years fighting for seniors. Jack, come on. Up. Thank you very much. Well, first, I want to salute our great leader in this great endeavor and critical endeavor, Bernie Sanders. Yeah. All my colleagues from the Senate and the House, but I particularly want to recognize David Cicilline because the Rhode Island delegation is strongly supportive of Bernie's efforts to save Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. Senator Whitehouse would have been here, but he's on the floor managing a critical piece of legislation right now. But we're all here also with representatives like Ed Coyle of the Alliance for Retired Americans and Max Christian, old friend. Uh, we're here to echo the extraordinary uh, and passionate plea uh, and demand of Bernie Sanders. We've got to save Social Security, save Medicare, save Medicaid. This is what is the difference between being in the middle class, staying in the middle class, retiring with dignity, and not. And we've got to save these programs. Now. Yes, sir. All right. Bernie yes. talked about the chain CPI. And there are some that say, well, this is just a technical correction that reflects the statistical flux of coming and going <laughs> here and there. <laughs> But what it does, it, exactly what Bernie said, if you are retired, uh, you're going to keep losing money the longer you live, and the longer you live, the more money you need for prescriptions, for health care, just to get by. It's $14,000 a year, the average benefit, and you lost $1,000 by the time you're 85. That's not a marginal technical correction. That is a life-changing experience. We've got to recognize that, and we've got to fight against that. Now, the other thing it's going to do, because they're going to apply the tax brackets, is going to raise taxes on middle Americans, on the struggling families today. That's another a little technical fix that they're trying to work in. So we have to pull together, starting today. Let your voices be hear, heard here in Washington, but more importantly, across this land, to say, as Bernie has said so eloquently, those who are benefiting from the extraordinary success of this system should participate and contribute to it. But don't punish those people who depend upon these critical programs. That's right. Let's go forth from this time and this place and save these great programs. Thank you. One of the real long-time champs fighting for the middle class and seniors, Al Franken of Minnesota. So. Thank you, Bernie, for your leadership on this. Uh, this is personal to me. Uh, my wife, Franny, was 17 months old when her father, a decorated World War II veteran, uh, died in a car accident leaving uh, my mother-in-law widowed at age 29 with five kids. Mm -hmm. They made it because of Social Security survivor benefits. That's how they made it. So, you think you, you know, I have burning hot in me. <laughs> <laughs> watch me watch TV with my wife. <laughs> Bernie, Bernie would just yell to do it. <laughs> Franny, Franny knows how to get, get to me. Uh, this is wrong. Uh, this is wrong. You know, last time they, Bernie talked about the solvency of Social Security. Last time, first of all, this has nothing to do with the debt. This is a self-sustaining program. So let's check it. And let's make sure that it's there for, because Social Security has survived the Great Depression, wars. It, it, it'll survive, and we just need to, to do what's right when we correct it. In 1983, 90% of 
of income in this country was sub subject to FICA. Now, because of the shift of income to the very top, only 83% of income is subject to FICA. Let's, let's, the, the way to go here is to change it so that, again, about 90% of our income is subject to FICA. That is the way to go, not take it. Right. Yes. Not reduce the income to people who, who require, you know, a third of the elderly population. Uh, depend on Social Security for 90% of their income. This is the wrong thing to do for them. Nine, and and two-thirds rely on at least half of their income. And this CPI is adjusted this for inflation. It, it, let's talk about the inflation for people who are over 65. It's different. They rely on health care more than people below 65. For a reason. I remember during 2009 when all the Affordable Care Act debate was going on and yelling at, at town meetings, a, a woman came up to me at the State Fair in Minnesota and she was, I'd say, in her mid 70s, and she said to me, You know, at my age, everything's pre existing. <laughs> <laughs> Inflation for people over 65 is different for inflation for people under 18. That's right. And for people 18 to 25, and for people 25 to 32. And I could go on and on saying numbers, but I won't. <laughs> I'll let the, uh, the rest, the rest of them. We have to fight this. And thank you, Bernie. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Alex. One of the great new additions to the United States Senate, and one of our strongest voices for working family is Elizabeth Warren of Massachusetts. Thank you. Thank you. You know, I love being here with you. I love being here with you because we're here to fight for what we believe in. This is not a fight about money. This is a fight about values. This is a fight about who we are as a people and what kind of people we are. That's what this is about. Cutting Social Security with a chain CPI makes no sense at all. It is a way of saying cut benefits for seniors, for veterans, for orphans, for the permanently disabled. We are better than that. That's not where we make cuts in this country. We wouldn't let our government repeal Social Security, and we are not going to let them dismantle it inch by inch. That will not happen. targets the most vulnerable among us. The current cost of living understates the true inflation for our seniors. Just as Al said, chain CPI is just a way to take a problem and make it worse. These cuts will compound over time. They grow to 3% after 10 years, 8.5% after 30 years. This matters to people who count on their Social Security every single day. We will not do this. Thank you. So the way I see this, this truly is a conversation about our values. So let's just put it out there about our values. Right now, there are people who would cut benefits for seniors who are living on about $1,100 a month. That's right. At the same time, they will support billions of dollars in subsidies to big oil companies. That's wrong. Wrong. That's just wrong. Right now, there are people who would cut benefits to seniors who are living on about $1,100 a month, but they would support continuing tax breaks for companies that send jobs overseas. That's wrong. That's wrong. 
right now, there are people who want to cut benefits for seniors who live on $1,100 a month, but at the same time, they support maintaining subsidies for big agricultural companies. That's, That's wrong. wrong. This debate is about our values. This debate is about what kind of a people we are and what kind of a country we are going to build. I believe we are a people who honor our commitments to our seniors. That's what we do. That's the kind of people we are. Right. Yeah. We don't ask our seniors to take cuts while we let corporations line up for special handouts. We don't do that. That's no. not a reflection no. of our values. Social Security is a program that people paid for themselves. This isn't a handout. This isn't a gift from taxpayers. This is a system that workers paid into. And now workers count on it. That's right. We should not balance our budget on the backs of veterans, seniors, the disabled, surviving family members, not when we can close corporate tax loopholes, end unnecessary, uh, end unnecessary subsidies, and find other ways to bring our budget into balance. Social Security is not creating our budget problems. Right. Social Security works, and we have to remember that and support it. For more than 75 years, Social Security has been a critical part of all we do. You know, Al said Social Security is personal to him. It's personal to me. I remember in my own family, my Aunt B getting her Social Security check every single month. And you know what that Social Security check did for her? It wasn't just about putting food on the table. It wasn't just about paying her utility bills. It was about her independence. Right. She had paid in. My Aunt B had been a working woman all of her life. Born in 1901, so do the calculation on that. God bless her. She had worked from the 1920s forward. She, once there was a social security system put into place in the 1930s, she paid into it and she felt like every month she cashed a check that was based on what she had earned. That made her independent, That's it right. made her strong, it made her proud. That's what Social Security is about. And we are here as a country to reaffirm that's what it will always be about. Yes. Yes. here in Washington is going to be one, not just in the Senate, you heard from some of my Senate colleagues, it is going to be one with our great friends in the House of Representatives as well. Let me introduce a man who's been fighting for seniors for decades, Congressman Peter DeFazio Barr. I've heard a lot about chain CPI from the pointy head economists down at the White House and elsewhere, and they say, look, it's justified and uh, it's de minimis. Well, first off, as you heard earlier, it's not justified. Seniors' cost of living accelerates quicker uh, than any other segment of society because they consume pres prescription drugs, medical care. Uh, their fixed costs for rent and utilities and fuel for their car are a bigger percentage of their diminished income and in retirement. They should actually have, as Bernie and I have introduced for years, a CPIE, something that actually would give them an increase. Secondly, it's not de minimis. Sure as heck is not de minimis. This is, if you retired at age 65, he's 66 now for full retirement, uh, by the time you reach 85, now each one of these little symbols represents a week's worth of food for the average senior uh, in retirement. So by the time you're 80, 85, you've lost 16 weeks of food budget at that, that point. Now, of course, the point he had say, well, that's, you know, that's what this is all about, actually. It's, it's substitution, you know? If, uh, if they were eating steak, they'll get chicken. If they're eating chicken, they'll get, um, uh, they'll get pasta. And if they're eating pasta... Uh, pet food. Uh, yeah, pet food, except that's kind of expensive, too. I've got cats and dogs, but something. Anyway, so uh, it is not 
justified, and it is not de minimis. And then the one other point is, well, some of them fall back on the deficit argument, as we heard earlier from many people, Social Security did not create this deficit, it's self-financing. Then they say, oh, well, actually, we want to save Social Security, that's why we want to do it. If you cut the benefit of every future retiree on Social Security, you would extend the life of the trust fund for two years. Oh, Lord. If you tax all the earned income of every American, you will extend the future of Social Security forever without cutting benefits for seniors. Thank you, uh, Peter. Uh, an old friend of mine and someone who has, again, came from the ranks of fighting for seniors and continues that effort in the House of Representatives, Congresswoman Jan Schakowsky from Illinois. fighting colleagues, and I'm especially proud to stand before all of you. I, I want to do a special shout out for the Illinois uh, Alliance for Retired yeah. Americans. Uh, I'm so happy to see you. I was executive director of that organization for five years before coming into public service. I want to thank the uh, Social Security and Medicare. Max came to uh, Illinois for me and we had a wonderful town meeting. We are all ready to fight. I want to thank the veterans, the union retiree organizations. This is a mighty coalition that can stop the cuts to Social Security, yes. Medicare, and Medicaid. No doubt about it. So, are you ready? Are you ready? Yes. So you've heard you've heard a, a, a lot of the uh, the, the facts uh, about it. You know, I was uh, I I led a letter in the House of Representatives signed by more than half of the Democratic Caucus, um, expressing our opposition to benefit cuts in Social Security and Medicare and Medicaid, and focused on change CPI. You can call it what you want. What it really is is a benefit cut. Yep, no right. question right. about it. Right. But I, I'll tell you, I want to make three other points today. Winning the, the, the fight on chain CPI is not enough. We really do have to prevent um, uh, any cuts to Medicare and Medicaid as well. I want to say a few words. What I think the, you know, some uh, uh, don't, un don't understand, when you cut Medicare, it is the same check that people get. It comes out of your social security check. Okay. And in fact, in, 2000, in, in 1987% of the average social security benefit went to pay for health care. In 2010, it was 26%. Okay. So a big chunk of your check already goes to Medicaid, Medicare. And cuts to Medicaid like the House Republican plan to slash $180 billion over the next 10 years would leave seniors paying more for long-term care as well. The other thing is, and I think this was mentioned earlier, protecting Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid is part of our fight against income inequality. Yes. yes. Between 1966 and 2011, 90 percent of Americans saw their real income grow by 59 bucks. But the top 1 percent saw their income grow by more than $628,000 per person. Americans who rely on Social Security, Medicaid, and Medicare are in the 90%, and many of them are at the bottom end, and half of all seniors and disabled people on Medicare live on less than $22,500 a year. Not exactly rolling in the dough. The other thing that they talk about is um, raising the age of eligibility, because, as you know, they say, everyone is living longer. Wrong. If you're in the top half of the income in our country, you may be living longer. The richer you get, the longer you can live, you get health care. If you're in the bottom half, your longevity has remained steady. 
And if you're a poor woman in the United States of America, you have actually lost length of life. So don't give me that about raising the age. So we have to reject these proposals. We don't have to do any of that to Social Security. We can scrap the cap. That's there right. You go. not only be here in the halls of Congress, every district, I'm glad you're here. We have to be back in every congressional district at home talking to our members of Congress, members of the Senate. We can win this battle, my sisters and brothers. Thank you. Thank you. Small state of Rhode Island has been a leader in helping us fight against these proposed cuts, please welcome David Cicilline, Congressman from Rhode Island. Good afternoon. First, I want to thank uh, Senator Sanders for his great leadership in the Senate, and I'm proud to say both of my senators, Senator Reid and Senator White, has been an important part of the fight. Uh, I'm really delighted to be here today with my House colleagues, uh, folks like Jan Schakowsky, who has been in this fight for a very, very long time, Ted Deutsch, Keith Ellison. I'm new to this effort. Uh, but one thing is very clear to me. Social Security is not an entitlement. That's right. It's an earned benefit. It's something that seniors receive after a lifetime of hard work, after paying into the program, and it's something that we have a responsibility to protect, not only for you or for people who are currently receiving it, but for all future generations. Yeah. And as Senator Warren said, this is not something that was just created out of the air. It was created because it reflected our values as a country. We decided that when you reached a certain age or a certain disability, that you be, should be guaranteed to have an income so that you could live with dignity and that you could retire with peace of mind. Those are important American values. We should be proud of those things. And instead of hearing people scowl about how we need to reform entitlements, we should be talking about how we preserve and strengthen Social Security, right. Medicare, and Medicaid yes. because they are what reflect our values as a country. is a cut to those benefits that gets worse over time. And we are, I think, engaged in a fundamental fight, not just about Medicare, Social Security, Medicaid, but really a fight for the, the soul of this country. There are people in Washington who continue to fight to be sure that people with political power have more of it, and people who have great wealth have a greater concentration of wealth. And what we're fighting for is an America where people have hope and opportunity, where people can move from the working poor into the middle class and beyond. Social Security is a key part of that. Yes. So I'm proud to be here because I know what Social Security meant to my grandparents, and I promise to fight with every fiber of my body to protect Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. Thank you very much. <laughs> Folks get old, and they get cold, they head to Florida. Yeah. <laughs> Representing the great state of Florida as a congressman who's been fighting hard on this issue, Ted Deutsch. Ted. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Sanders. Uh, thanks, Senator Sanders. Uh, and uh, let me just say, being in this room with so many friends, our friends from labor, our friends from the veterans communities, our advocates for seniors, the alliances here, we are proud to stand with you in this fight to save Social Security and Medicare and Medicaid. Thanks for being here with us. We will be here for you. As my colleagues have already explained, the change CPI means lower Social Security benefits for seniors, lower benefits for veterans, and even higher taxes for middle class families. Now, some say that the change CPI just slows the growth of benefits. Huh. It's just a way of accounting, we're told. Yeah. It's not a cut. <laughs> just buy cheaper goods when the prices go up. <laughs> try telling that. Try telling that to the folks that I was, ha I was handing healthy meals to at a senior center in Margate, Florida, just a few weeks ago. Meals that, due to the sequester, are going to cost, are going to be cut. I want, to, I want you to understand that many of my constituents, some of the best ones who are here today, but many, many of my constituents understand 
and survived the Great Depression. That's right. That's right. They know how to be thrifty. <laughs> and what the chain CPI says to those hungry seniors is, you're not pinching your pennies hard enough. Oh. Clip more coupons. Oh. Skip a few more meals. Turn off your air conditioning. Oh. Don't fill all of your prescriptions. Social security benefits and the cost of living adjustments aren't too lavish. Cost of living adjustments are meager at best and non-existent at worst. Just because we have a lot of Americans in the baby boomer generation who are retiring and are starting to gain the benefits that they earned doesn't mean that the Social Security program itself is the epicenter of government waste prime for the chopping block. It isn't. I understand the impulse to look at Social Security as a source of cost savings. It's a big program. That's why everybody likes to look at it. But it's funded by its own revenue stream. And it was done that way to keep it off budget and to prevent it from ever being used as a bargaining chip in political battles. That's the way it has to be. Right. I'll fight you for that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ted. Thank you, Ted. Last, but certainly not least, uh, is a gentleman who has done an extraordinary job as chairman of one of the largest caucuses in the House of Representatives, the Progressive Caucus. Please welcome Keith Ellison. Hey, thanks, thanks so much. You know, I've been, I've been fighting against this chain CPI so much, I'm starting to lose my voice a little bit. <laughs> but I want you to know that even though my voice is a little raspy, my energy is high to defeat this chain CPI idea. We have to stick together and we have to spread the message all across this country that our seniors' security, social security, is no bargaining chip anywhere. That's right. We have to spread the word. We have to talk. We have come together here, seniors, labor, civil rights groups, but we've got to spread the word even farther. And not only that, we've got to talk to people in every bit of this country, absolutely Florida, Illinois, but also in Minnesota, where I'm from, up in Vermont, we've got to build a mighty wave a coalition so that we don't only just protect Social Security, we actually advance and expand Social Security as we should. Yeah. You know, yeah. Absolutely, we should scrap the cap. That ought to be very yeah. important. Yeah. But we ought to allow Medicare Part D to negotiate drug prices so we yeah. can actually yeah. change. Years ago, you know, when people talk about retirement, we thought of it as a three-legged stool. There would be money you saved, <coughs> money from your job, and social security. Mm -hmm. One leg of that stool, it may not go way up in the stock market, but it ain't gonna go way down either. That's right. It's gonna be solid. Mm -hmm. Now we've been through the Great Recession, and some people's 401k has turned into a 201k. <laughs> And so many people's wealth was in their home value, and we saw what happened to that in the foreclosure mm -hmm. crisis. So the rock of retirement remains Social Security more than ever. We're not going to let anybody mess with it. And I'm going to tell you this. I don't care who is talking about messing with Social Security. We're going to fight back. You bet. Social Security Park. Oh, yeah. last, word, last, word, last word. You're not alone. We got a letter that Jan's led with 107 members saying that they pledged to oppose any cuts to Social Security. Right. We got another letter that Mark DeCano and Alan Grayson are leading that says that they will vote against anything that includes cuts to Social Security. Yes. We have, before he ran out of here, um, uh, Mr. Cicilline, he has a resolution that, with 80 people on it saying we stand with Social Security. Yes. And you all got the baddest senator in the United States Senate, Mr. <laughs> Bernie Sanders. Yes. 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 So those of us who 
are in Congress and with you, our partners all across this America, we know that the future of Social Security is bright because we're going to make it so. Take care, everybody. Woo! Nobody has mentioned today the biggest loophole of all that Wall Street pays no taxes on speculative transa transactions. And I know you're all for this, and I don't understand why you don't make the connection where you're going to get the money to pay for this. Some of us have made that connection, but let me. Not today. Excuse me. Excuse me. Miss, we are. Let me let people speak, please. All right? And why do you reserve the most me. Excuse me. I wanted to mention something. Uh, Jan Schakowsky reminded me of an important point that, in fact, we have not talked about enough, and that is the disability community. And we all stand with those people who are dealing with disabilities, and we're not going to see that. Yeah. I want to thank uh, all of the members of the Senate and the House for being here. Now I want to uh, give the mic over to the Executive Director of the Alliance for Retired Americans, a guy who helped organize this event. Please welcome Ed Coyle. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much and good afternoon everybody. Thank you Senator Sanders and all the other leaders that have been here today for uh, for the leadership you're providing in these fights, and we are all behind you. My name is Ed Coyle, and I am the Executive Director of the Alliance for Retired Americans. On behalf of our 4 million members nationally, and our 100 leaders who are in this room this afternoon, I want to uh, tell everybody here that we're going to fight to the end to beat this uh, Republican Congress and what they want to do to change CPI. State and local alliance chapters will fan out all over Capitol Hill when we're finished here. They'll urge lawmakers to support the Harkins Sanders White House resolution in the Senate and the Cicilline resolution in the House, and they will say no to change CPI. Thank you to all the members who are here today and all the leadership that you provide, and for all your leadership on retiree issues. I thank all of you on behalf of our members nationally. Washington. Washington policy wonks have a cold, technical name for this idea. They call it chained CPI, hoping that people won't know what the hell it is. <laughs> but struggling seniors call it something very different. Uh -huh. They desperately need it, and they call it a cut. That's right. Call it what you want, members of Congress, but it is a cut. And our members across the country are going to tell you it's a cut everywhere you go in your state or in your congressional district. A study by the group Social Security Works shows that under this proposal, someone retiring at the age of 65 would lose nearly $5,000 in benefits by the age of 75, within 10 years. By age 85, as has been mentioned, they would lose almost $10,000. And if you're still alive when you're 95, you would lose $15,000. Now let's, let's take this seriously. The average Social Security check is slightly more than $1,200 a month. $1,200 a month. For many retirees, this is their only source of income. That's it, $1,200 a month. And by average, you mean average is $1,200. For a lot of people, that means average is way below uh, $1,200. So I can't imagine how folks can, can live on that, frankly. Um, the fact of the matter is, many of them cannot. So not only is this proposed cut a terrible policy choice, but it also has no place in deficit reduction talks. The mere mention of it fuels the false and corrosive myth that Social Security causes the budget deficit. This is, to be polite, a flat out lie. Right. Social Security has never contributed one dime to the deficit, and if you want to check me out, just ask His Eminence Alan Simpson from Wyoming, That's who right. has said the exact same thing. Social Security does not contribute one dime to the, uh, to the deficit. Uh, sometimes people forget the basic facts about Social Security and Medicare. They are not handouts. They are not handouts. They are benefits 
you've earned and which you've paid for every month of your working life mm -hmm. from the day one from day one on your job. We cannot allow workers and re and retirees to pay the price for a problem that frankly they did not create. Instead, we should ask big corporations and their CEOs to finally pay their fair share. Social Security gives today's workers hope that they will someday enjoy a safe and a secure retirement. That's all they're asking. We must support these Senate and House resolutions that these uh, men and women up here are supporting. We must keep the promise of a strong Social Security alive for generations to come. We must stand our ground and we must fight back. Thank you all for being here. Thank you all for the line. You know, you know, those of us who are here in Washington sometimes maybe get too full of ourselves, and I'm constantly reminded that where this is really getting done is out in the field. And where this is really getting done is when you see faces of real people on TV or quoted in the paper who are affected by this. So uh, three of our Alliance uh, members who are here this week for our leadership conference um, are going to speak to you just briefly about personal situations that they find or would find themselves in. Uh, if they were uh, if they were caught if their social security was cut, so I want to introduce three of our alliance members who are here, and if you, all three of you could come up uh, now, uh, Jody Weinrich is a, uh, a retiree from Pennsylvania, worked in the garment industry, is now a member of the Alliance for Retired Americans board. Uh, second is Marty Walsh from Glendale, Missouri, um, uh, who worked in the insurance industry, and Marty Alvarado is a member of the Community Advocacy Network in in Dallas, Texas and she has worked in the electronics industry. So please greet them, and, uh, and they are going to tell you just briefly uh, what's, how this would affect them. Remember their stories, because this is how we're going to get it done. It's not making speeches in Washington. So. Thank you all for being here today. My name is Jody Warnick, and I'm a member of the Alliance for Retired Americans. I'm from Allentown, Pennsylvania. I am 63 years old. My whole life I have been an extremely hard working person. I spent 40 years working in the garment industry. I worked as a floor lady and table worker making undergarments, men's and women's clothes, and everything from textile. As you know, the American garment industry and textile industry has lost thousands of workers over the past 20 years. When I was 62, I began collecting Social Security. Currently, I receive a little over $800 a month in Social Security. Additionally, I have a pension of about $105 a month, and I work 10 hours a week. Every month, I spend $500 on health insurance, well over half of my monthly income. I barely have any money left to cover my other expenses. The biggest thing that gives me hope that is in a year and a half, when I turn 65, I will be eligible for Medicare. For me and millions of other Americans in similar circumstances, raising the age of Medicare to 67 would be a disaster. So would implementing the chain CPI. Seniors are already struggling to stay afloat with what we currently have available to us. We will not stand idly by while the benefits we have earned are taken away. Thank you. My name is Mario Prado and I am here to represent the Alliance for Retired Americans from Dallas, Texas. I spent decades working for Texas Instruments and for Norton. While I do have some retirement funds, I only withdraw a small amount every month. This makes Social Security very important to me. After Medicare deductions, I only have a little over $9.50 a month left of my Social Security check. As you might imagine, this is very difficult for me to live on. I can't afford to lose any of my benefits due to the chain CPI cut in benefits. This is especially important to me as a woman, especially a woman of color. Women represent 57% of all Social Security beneficiaries. Chain CPI 
would hit female beneficiaries especially hard because we tend to live longer. But we can stop the chain CPI if we band together and fight back. I'm proud to be here alongside all these members of Congress and my fellow retirees. Letting those who are trying to cut our benefits know that we will not stand to see our already modest standard of living take a hit. Thank you. Good afternoon, my name is Marty Walsh, I'm from St. Louis, and I worked hard, uh, dedicated at many designation, professional designations in the insurance industry where I worked for almost 40 years. I worked hard, unfortunately due to the economy and due to the, some problems of companies, I had had to change. I didn't job jump. I had to change, and as a result, I have very little in the way of a pension. I depend on Social Security. As uh, Congressman Deutsch talked about, I'm going to have to find ways to uh, cut back on the food that I eat, or you know, buy cheaper things. Mm -hmm. I've already done that. And now they want to do it some more. When, when Congress, with their trillion dollar budgets, talks about minor adjustments, it is not that to me. It, it is more of a major adjustment. And I'd like to throw a word in, which no one else has done yet. I have some kids I love. Mm -hmm. And I have a grandson that I really love. Think, when they're talking about what it's going to do for us in 20 or 30 years, what it's going to do to them, mm -hmm. who do not have some of the guaranteed benefit retirements that we have. Those are gone. And they are really going to suffer. And I would love to fight for my children and grandchildren. Mm -hmm. So these, these, this is a serious issue, not only for us, but our, for our families. Talking about cuts, I've been asked to notice the, the beautiful sculpture over here dedicated by our friends from Ohio with a reminder that if we want to do some cutting, one place to cut is drug prices. That's right. Yeah. 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 But uh, they, they say they want uh, Congress to have it. So but it gives me hope, though with all these fantastic people that we had here today who are fighting for us and encourages me to fight for them to see that, that we together you know, will get this job done and protect ourselves from this chain CPI. And thank you for your time. Thank you uh, so much, uh, Marty and Marty and Jody for uh, telling your stories here today. Remember those stories, and I know all of you have many stories of your own back in your states uh, that you can relay to other people. This is not the only meeting you go to. You go to lots of other meetings, church groups, the Kiwanis Club, the Moose Lodge. This story has to be told outside of our own little circle here. So uh, learn your own, tell your own, learn your neighbor's um, stories, and let's keep repeating them. And we have to also remember that um, this is not only about current retirees. This is about people who are going to retire in the next few years. Uh, I, I want to ask uh, Tony German, who is a, uh, who is a uh, uh, port truck driver from Charleston, South Carolina. He has uh, got a unique story to tell us. We've invited him to do so. And keep him in mind, too. And keep all the people back at home uh, who are two or three years away from retirement and tell them this story, too. Tony? My name is Tony German, and I'm speaking on behalf of the container truck drivers from Charleston, South Carolina. We haul freight for a steamship line called MERS. MERS Steamship Line has received over $6 billion in federal contracts over the past decade. Drivers like myself aren't seeing much of that $6 billion. In fact, we feel like sharecroppers on wheels. I make around $36,000 per year. My pay hasn't gone up in 13 years. Oh, wow. The price of tires, oil, insurance, and fuel oh. that we pay for is skyrocketing. A lot of us are near the retirement age. I'm 55 years old, but we have no retirement, no dental, our health plan. 
we're facing a retirement crisis. That's horrible. I'm 55 years old. I have earned my benefits. I'm barely hanging on as it is. I hear people say it is okay to cut my benefits because I am near the retirement at 55. I can tell you we have a retirement crisis and I cannot, I cannot afford to have even a penny of my future benefits cut. Let me speak clearly. Hands off my benefits. Hands off our future benefits. Our benefits. That's Thank right. You. Yeah. Thank you so much. Will you uh, be in the front row every time I speak yeah. someplace? Yes, sir. That's great. You're a great audience. Uh, and finally, the, the Alliance for Retired Americans works very closely with the National Committee to Preserve Social Security and Medicare everywhere. They are our allies in many, many fights, and I see some of their yellow t-shirts here today. So it's my uh, pleasure to uh, bring to the podium now Max Richman, who is the president uh, of the National Committee to Preserve Social Security. Max, thanks for being here. Thank our volunteers and those you you can recognize them those uh, bright yellow T-shirts. And we're here today because these programs, Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, Veterans Benefits, are once again under threat. Right? Right. right. But I have hope. I think we will win this fight, and the reason is because of the leaders you've seen here today from the Congress and groups such as Social Security Works, and of course, Ed Coyle and the Alliance for Retired Americans has been on the front lines for half a century working on these issues. So thank you, Ed, for everything you do. You know, the President has not helped us. He has not helped us. And when we met with him, a small group of us, one week to the day after the election, we made the case, I did, that Social Security should not be part of any negotiations. That's right. Then it was the fiscal cliff, now it's the debt limit. He agreed. He said to our group, about eight of us in the White House, we agree with you. That has changed. He has put out a budget that includes what everybody's been talking about this, this afternoon, the chain CPI, which is a bad idea. I'm beginning to think that uh, we should call the chain CPI for what it really means, cutting people's income. Yeah. Cutting yeah. people's income. That's what <laughs> it's bad enough that the current formula does not keep up with inflation, does not look at the kinds of things seniors rely on, the things that they need. We need to improve it. We need to improve the current formula. Uh, you know, in 2010, 2011, what was your COLA? Zero. Zero. Yeah. Those folks that think there's a better way to compute the COLA will tell you that zero you got was too much. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly right. So, what I've, and I've, I've said this before, I remember uh, the debate that Joe Biden, Vice President Biden, had. Uh, with uh, Congressman Paul Ryan, and he caught him, I don't know if you remember this, he mm -hmm. caught him stretching the truth mm -hmm. at one point. And uh, Vice President, and only the way he could say this, said, that's malarkey. That's what we say to the chain CPI. That's right? right? What do we say? That's that's malarkey. Malarkey. <laughs> and when they say, the chain CPI is just a technical correction. Huh. What do we say? Yes. And when they say it's a more accurate measure of inflation, what do we say? Yes. And when they say benefit cuts of Social Security are needed to get a budget deal, what do we say? Yes. And finally, when they say supporters of the chain CPI will not be heard when their candidates in the 2014 election 
What I say is what my good friend Terry O'Neill, the president of NOW, has said. That's damn malarkey. Yeah. So don't give up. I know you haven't given up. We can stop this if we work together to defeat this terrible idea, which is simply, as Jan Schakowsky has said many times, call it what it is, it's a cut in benefits. Thank you very much, and thank all of you. Go back to uh, the, uh, the lobby, your uh, members of Congress and your senators uh, carry it with you today as you depart from here to go visit them in their offices here in Washington. Uh, for those of you uh, here with the Alliance for, for Retired Americans, a special thank you to you for all your work this week. Uh, thank you to everybody else who is here. Uh, now for the Alliance for Retired Americans, go forth and lobby and uh, <laughs> at five o'clock uh, I'll buy you a drink back at the AFL-CIO. Okay. Thank you everybody. So as everyone is uh, getting ready to leave and uh, fan out across the Capitol to carry our message, uh, we also have 3,000 people tuning in live from uh, home, and we're going to just keep talking to them, but I know you all have lobby visits set up, so we'll try to do both at the same time. Thanks everybody for coming. You are great. Sure. We still have our audience. Uh, we're good. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to ask, I know we've got uh, a lot of people who are still tuned in. I'm going to pull some people up to, to speak with you. Um, if you have any questions that you want to ask, uh, go ahead and ask them in the comment section, and uh, I'll do my best to get them uh, and to uh, answer them. I'm going to bring up a few people, one after another. Um, we got some steel workers behind us right now. Do you want to? So the first person I'm going to call up is uh, Eric Kingston. He's the founder of Social Security Works. Um, come on up. And. Um, Yes, and I'm going to be with you in just one second. Let me just hand the mic over to Eric Kingston. Um, you don't have to speak into the mic, just stand right here. No, nope, but I'm thinking there's a wonderful picture behind me. I'm going to stand away from... This is the Pennsylvania. Yeah, yeah don't touch... Uh, no workers. Great. Right, don't touch the microphone. Okay. Um, don't touch the microphone. Uh, okay. Well, thank you all for being here in this event. It's extraordinary. Probably a couple hundred people. Strong spirit. There's a battle that we're all involved in, and we appreciate every single piece of effort that's out there. If you have a moment, get on the phone, call your members of Congress, call your senators, let them know you do not want to see your benefits cut or your children or your grandchildren's. So, thank you all for being here. Let me see if I can hold on one second. Henny, do you want to say hello to the people in California who are listening in? We have, this is. Hi there. 
here. Henny Kelly from San Francisco, California. I have been very excited today by hearing members of Congress talk about what is important to me and my children and my grandchildren and should be important to all of you. They were here to save Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid, and this is very important to them, and it should be important to all of you. I will tell you something, Social Security didn't have anything to do with the debt. Social Security only is something that will help you when you retire. So everybody fight for it. What do you tell people when they wake up in the morning? Uh, well, every morning I get up and I look in the mirror to make sure it's me. No, no, no. Just stay there. Then, okay. Every morning I get up and I go to the bathroom and look in the mirror to make sure it's me and then I know I'm alive. And the next thing I do is I take a cup of coffee and sit down and call Washington, D.C. And I call my senators, I call my uh, representative, Nancy Pelosi, and I tell them, don't cut Social Security, Medicare, or Medicaid. I do that every morning. And then every afternoon, when I'm getting a little tired, because you know I'm old, I sit down for a cup of tea, and I call my senators, and I call my representative at their district offices, and I tell them, make sure you don't cut Medicare, Social Security, or Medicaid. You can do that. Two phone calls each day to your representatives will really help us. So please do that. Take care. Love you. Love you too. Now you know why this is such a wonderful event. Hey, Eric, Eric, would you? Uh, can I? Can I ask you some questions for the camera? Oh, if here? you want to ask. I, me. I have the esteemed pleasure to, to work for one of one of the most uh, accomplished and renowned veterans and defenders of Social Security and experts in retirement security and social insurance. And, it, and it's been my pleasure to, to work and study under Eric at Social Security Works. But Eric, I'm a young guy, and I want to I want to ask you. So, so all the listeners out there should know. Why should young people care? Oh, that's a good question. I think you know the answer as well as I, but I'll answer it. Young people should care for many reasons. One, it's their benefits, and they need it. Every young person bears real risk just as older people. They should care also because, obviously, and they do care, which is a remark remarkable thing, their grandparents, their parents rely on this system. There's a self-interest there, which is absent this system. You've heard about boomerang children. Well, you might find boomer parents walking into the home with their suitcases. But more kidding aside, this is the core institution, the core protection we have. Those of some of you, some folks out there, will have lost parents when they were young, as you heard from Frank, uh, from Senator Franken. His wife lost a parent and it was through Social Security that her mother was able to hold her family together and five children through through the age of 21. It's critical. It's the basic life insurance Americans have. Working Americans on average have about a half million dollars in life insurance equivalent if they have a couple of young kids, which you know very well. It's also the basic disability protection. There's this is tough. When I was 25, I wasn't thinking, gee, I might be disabled, I might drop dead, I might not reach 65, but there is about a 30% chance of not reaching 65, 66 in good health and requiring some disability support. That's also the insurance you buy when you pay your premiums for Social Security. And then in the end, this is the system that works. We've heard about the three-legged stool, as Daniel knows. It's looking well, more like a one-legged stool yeah, at the moment, I and, actually, and a thin one at that. Very much, I call it a pogo stick, pogo and it's stick. Social Security is what's keeping us going. And so, lots of reasons, which you know as well as I, Daniel. And I, I, finally, because yeah, finally, there's a value there. Elizabeth Warren spoke to this. This is about the kind of nation we want to be, the kind of people we are. And it's very important to speak directly to these values. Uh, this is government working with us, 
enabling us to maintain our security, but also the security of our neighbors, which is important. And, and you know, there's another thing that I think young people are slowly starting to realize, which is that even if we do find a job in this economy, where the unemployment rate for, for recent college grads is significantly higher than the rest of the population, we're likely to earn less for the rest of our lives as a result of entering the labor market during the recession. And, and when we do get that job, we're going to have a 401k, but we might be less likely to own a home than we used to in the past. And even that 401k is going to go up and down with the market. We know it leaks. We know it, we're going to be giving fees to Wall Street. We don't have the same pension protections that some previous generations had. And so it's important to know that actually for us, regardless of, of, of what's going on in the world, Social Security is going to be more important to us, period. Absolutely. And, and, and that, you know. Absolutely. And, and that's a part of this discussion. What's really most at stake is the well-being of younger people in this policy debate. Most of the people are here today. They don't risk as much as their children who are in their 40s and 50s or their grandchildren. And so that's a critical thing to remember and to engage the American public. You know, I thought that one of the most moving speakers today was the person who brought up this very issue. And that was a man by the name of Marty Walsh. He's a retiree from, from Missouri. And, and he said, he said, I'm, I'm thinking about myself because I've already cut back. I've already cut back on food. And I don't think I can cut back anymore. And that in itself was, was extremely moving and important to hear. And I think he was speaking for millions of Americans who were in the same boat. But he also said, I'm thinking about my kids. I'm thinking about the financial strain I'll put on them if they have to take care of me. And I'm thinking about what they have to retire to when they reach my age. And that, that just encompassed that intergenerational solidarity. If we, don't, if we don't stand with young people as old people, we don't stand with old people as young people, then, then we're going to get ours eventually. And also, when you looked at the fellow who came up the fellow who, the truck driver who came up at the end from South Carolina. That is, that's 55. I mean, when you, the disrespect that's out there when they're talking about, this is just a little tweak, cutting the cost of living adjustment. It's so disrespectful to so many people who work hard. Same thing with retirement age. We're tired of listening to talking heads to very well financed politicians talking about how everyone has to be reasonable and raise their retirement age. The rest of the country knows that that's a cut for them. And, if, and that's the kind of, and the story we heard from a 55 year old man who's limping into retirement, working hard and limping in, is, is a strong reminder of why we can't cut this program. Now. Yeah, I, 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 took, I, took, I took that away from it, and I also saw, heard that story, and I said, this issue is not just an issue of Social Security per se. This is an issue that if you care about income inequality, if you care about, about management, seeing all the gains from the productivity growth in the past few decades, if you care about workers who are being exploited on the job and told, as this man was told, you're making 36 grand 13 years ago, tough, stick with that, you're not getting a raise, we're gonna take all the profits, we're doing just fine economically, but we're not gonna give you a share of any of that, and in fact, the price of, of the fuel that you pay for is gonna go up, so effectively your pay has been reduced. And so if you look at the American middle class and how they've been squeezed, and then you turn to them and say, we've taken away your pension, we've cut your pay, and, and now we're gonna tell you, especially people that are working physical jobs like truck drivers, we're gonna cut your social security too. It, it's, it's, it's just, it's the height of tragedy and injustice. It, it's disgusting, it's despicable. I won't disagree with you, Dan. <laughs> yeah. No. Well, why did you get involved in this? That's, that's a know, more I, interesting I, question. I have always been, uh, I have always been, let me put it to you this way, I think that it's a lot easier to be, if you come from a, a background where your parents are, let's say, college or graduate school educated, and you yourself went to a, a, an excellent private university as I did, it is a much more acceptable route and less risky route politically to be out on a limb on social issues, to be pushing the envelope on, on gay rights, on abortion rights, but when it comes to protecting sort of the New Deal social safety net, the New Deal worker social contract, the idea of 
social democracy in this country of, of, of shared wealth and shared prosperity, that is a lot riskier and that is, that is a lot more challenging. But, but I saw that there was something wrong with that and, and that, 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 that there was a widening income gap in this country and that economic justice is just as compelling and you need to be willing to sort of say, I didn't get this privilege on my own and, and, and maybe I don't need this privilege if this country is going to move forward. What we need is a system where we're all working together to share in our prosperity and have a, have a basic system of decency and safety against the risks of, of, of life and the, and the workplace. And unfortunately, I think that the Democratic Party and, and the upper middle class in this country has been moving away from that ethos, including many Democrats, toward a neoliberal ethos. And, and that's really what I saw in this fight for Social Security. Uh, it's, it's, just, it's a long and complicated explanation, but as, as these sometimes are, we're going to wrap it up. Eric, did you want to give a last word Just here? that we're very glad you found that passion, because we love having you. Well, I, on behalf of Eric Kingston and Nancy Allman, the co-chairs of the Strength and Social Security Coalition and Social Security Works, on behalf of the Alliance for Retired Americans, National Committee to Preserve Social Security and Medicare, the American Federation of Labor and Congress of Industrial Organizations, MoveOn.org, National Committee to Preserve Social Security and Medicare, I think I may have already said that, the Association of American Retired Persons and all the groups that were present here today, Senator Sanders, Congressman Keith Ellison, the Congressional Progressive Caucus, the heroes in the United States Congress that are making a stand to protect Social Security from benefit cuts and to strengthen it, not cut it. This is Daniel Marins signing off. Thank you so much for joining us. Stay with us on the fight. Follow us on strengthensocialsecurity.org. And you can stay tuned for this video at youtube.com slash weactradiodc.